Tomorrow morning, we'll check out the FBI's new computer system to catch drug dealers. Also, designer clothes at discount prices. And we'll preview the Grammys tomorrow on Today. One man is killed, two others injured at the police department's auto theft division, and a grandmother who changed her lifestyle to avoid crime is murdered in Northeast Houston. Good evening, I'm Bill Bayesa. And I'm Jan Carson. Also coming up, Bork crews fill a mysterious sinkhole near the Astrodome. It's all next on Channel 2 News at 6. How long does it take to get a really good workout? workout? I used to work out for an hour and a half with machines and free weights. That was then, then. This is now. I switched to the 30-minute workout with that amazing light circuit equipment. The 30-minute workout only at Bally's President and First Lady. For just $24 a month, you can get a 90-minute workout in a third of the time. Is 30 minutes enough? You tell me. For those who believe reduced fat cheese has to be bland, Cherney has some very sharp words. New Cherney Light. Delicious sharp cheddar taste with a third less fat. New Cherney Light. They're making more out of less. Red Lobster. Tonight, try 30 shrimp for just $8.95. Golden fried shrimp. Mmm, grilled. Shrimp scampi. 30 shrimp on one plate, just $8.95. Only at Red Lobster. Channel 2, KPRC-TV. Now, Channel 2 News at 6, with Jan Carson, Bill Baeza, Doug Johnson, Craig Roberts, and the Channel 2 News team. Good evening, everyone. Today was a day of Thanksgiving at a Houston church. Members of St. Anne's Parish are celebrating the release of one of their own who was kidnapped in Colombia. The story tonight from Rosalinda Perez. In homes and at church, news spread quickly. When we received the news of Father Francisco's release from his kidnappers, an occasion of great joy, as you could imagine. By this morning, word was out Father Francisco Amico was safe. Good morning, Sanan. They want to know the details. They want to know if he's okay. Um, they want to know if he, if he knows who took him, if they used force. Um, I was treated well, I was respected, and I received no, no bad treatment from them. Father Frank was held hostage for five days and released after being lectured on Colombia's political situation. He was also given a document listing complaints against American in presence Columbia. in Colombia. And finally it ends um, stating very clearly that North Americans who intervene in any way will be targets of, um, of the ELN. Father Amico was supposed to be at St. Anne's Church this week talking about his work. Instead, there are prayers for the hostage takers and praise for the priest. How important it is we pray for our enemies. How much they need our prayers. Oh, I think it's wonderful. Our prayers have been answered, that he's returned safely. He likes to help the people. He likes to give everything from him without expecting something in return. Prayers for Father Frank will continue. He's expected to return to Houston within the next week. Rosalinda Perez, Channel 2 News. And Rose has been told that two other Americans reportedly held by the same group that kidnapped Father Amico are supposed to be released soon as well. A Houston man is dead tonight after he was overcome by carbon monoxide in the basement of the Houston Police Auto Theft Division. Two other contract workers were injured. The three men were working with an air compressor in the auto theft basement, which had no ventilation. The men were contract workers for the Atlas Fencing Company and were drilling to set fence post holes. The two workers who were injured are being evaluated tonight at St. Joseph's Hospital. A grandmother who locked herself in her bedroom at night to escape neighborhood violence wasn't able to protect herself last night. 60-year-old Susie Clark was found dead in her room this morning by her grandson. Police say she apparently had heard gunshots last night and went to her window to look out. A stray bullet struck her in the face as she stood by her bedroom window. A boyfriend of one of her daughters ran into the house last night just before the shots were fired, saying he had been robbed. But nobody knew Clark had been shot until this morning when relatives broke down the door to her room and found her body. Police are looking for the suspects right now who will probably be charged with negligent homicide. The Kroger strike is still very much on tonight, but the four Kroger stores that were shut down by the strike in Houston 
reopened today. The company has been hiring temporary workers to fill in the gaps that are caused by 20,000 Kroger employees statewide being on the picket line. Bob Nicholas has an update on the negotiations to end the strike. Our sales have been very good. Customer counts up. We are making an operating profit. It's on that basis Kroger employees are holding out for more money. The strikers say they took a pay cut a few years ago to help bail the company out of trouble. Kroger then took on a $5 billion debt to prevent a takeover. We paid all of our, all of the stockholders' dividends uh, in order to, uh, to keep Kroger alive. So the message to the strikers is there is no more money in the kitty. And if the strike goes on much longer, Kroger may shut down its 173 stores in Texas. How are they going to write off one-fifth of their company and take a beating on it like the rest of us do on our homes and walk away from it? If Kroger cannot uh, resolve this conflict, if we cannot get our employees back to work, uh, if the strike continues, uh, then the future of Kroger in Texas is, is not very good. I doubt that. I mean, I really do, because this is one of the leading money-making areas right here. And if they do? Well, if they do, we just have to do what we're doing. It's finding something else to do. The union contract with Apple Tree has also expired, but union members here are waiting to see how Kroger settles first because it's considered the industry leader. Bob Nicholas, Channel 2 News. Contract talks with Kroger broke off late last night. No results. The two sides are scheduled to meet again tomorrow. Well, an East Side charity already under scrutiny for the way it spends its money is being accused tonight of strong-arming its elderly clients. A political candidate is calling for a city takeover of Unioni Progreso because of the allegations. Channel 2's Ken Kalthoff has more. With contributions and federal money from the city, Union E Progresso provides meals and other service for senior citizens. Officials at UYP's East Side headquarters were reluctant to let us show you their work today. This lady claims she was ordered out of the center. Because I say that they have a lot of roses, and they did have, because I was volunteered here. These people claim charity officials routinely coach old people to vote for certain political candidates and carry unwitting seniors off for campaign work. And I used to go and help them, but I, I, didn't, know, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Similar allegations in the past were not pursued because prosecutors said witnesses did not cooperate. Said, this lady claims she was never called back. Published reports now charge that charity officers misappropriated many thousands of dollars to themselves through use of charity credit cards and contracts for unspecified services from family members. Union E. Progresso lawyers said last week in a written statement that all expenses were legitimate. They declined comment about today's charges. UYP's former chairman says he had questions about the charity's money 10 years ago. I didn't like that, so I told him uh, if they were well, not going to, to give us a report of the money that I don't want to be the chairman, so I'll resign. Uh, the city needs to come in and intervene and uh, run the, organ the center on a day-to-day -day basis. That's not likely to happen anytime soon, but state and city officials are investigating Union E Progresso. Ken Kaltoff, Channel 2 News. Also tonight, city engineers are scratching their heads over a mysterious sinkhole that suddenly appeared on Brazewood Boulevard today. For the moment, public works engineers are calling the huge hole a void. Although most of it has been filled in by now, at one time, Akeem Olajuwon could have stood straight up in it, and the whole team could have played a half-court game in its 60 by 30 dimensions. The investigation has already ruled out leaking pipes in the area that might have caused erosion under this section of Brazewood. A big truck fell into the hole about 6 o'clock this morning. It's just east of Kirby on North Brazewood. Traffic is being rerouted until the mystery is solved and the street is fully repaired. I bet that truck would have called it more than a void. <laughs> well, there's been another setback today for some advertising aimed strictly at a particular group of women. Coming up next, the smoking controversy gets even hotter. Details in our Family Health Report just ahead. The war. Ford versus Chevy. Ford Ranger. Chevy S10 which has more cab space, which has more horsepower, which has more features for less money. In war, there's only one winner. Ford Ranger, the best-selling compact pickup in Texas. Texas Ford and you. Unlike our competition's elaborate packaging, you'll find no box inside the budget gourmet box. You'll find no bag. And you'll find no plates, because these things cost money. 
money we'd rather spend on the one thing you will find inside our box. Our food. The Budget Gourmet and the Budget Gourmet Light. Expensive food at reasonable prices. It was supposed to be a simple scene. The chopper takes off from a hilltop, circles back and lands, but that's not what happened. And seconds later, five people lie dying in the jungle. Now Entertainment Tonight gets the inside story on the Delta Force II disaster. It would destroy me to see these individuals continue to go on. And what if someone else dies again? Could this tragedy have been avoided as some claim? The lawsuits may start flying, and you'll get the compelling inside story only on Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 6.30 on Channel 2. Someday, you will find the Hawaii that is part of all of us. Of all the people who visit Hawaii, few ever really see it. With American Hawaii Cruises, you won't miss a thing. Let's talk dirty. My carpet, my furniture, and my drapes. Now let's talk clean. Hello, Steamatic. Call Blackman Mooring Steamatic. Americans are needlessly spending billions of dollars every year on health care directly related to problems associated with smoking. And that's according to the top health official in Washington. Family health reporter Tim Lake is here with more on this subject. Mm -hmm. Big news out of Washington today. Government officials appear to be really cracking down on the tobacco industry. They want tobacco companies to stop targeting women, minorities, and young people. Today, fear tactics, death, and economic statistics to encourage more laws restricting smoking. Today's report about the health care cost related to smoking carried more weight after Saturday's revelation that a tobacco company plans to test market a new cigarette on young women in Houston. I think it's pretty dumb. Um, kind of a put down. R.J. Reynolds' company apparently is ready to advertise its new Dakota cigarette to white women between 18 and 24 with no more than a high school education. Today, the nation's top health administrator called for state laws placing more restrictions on cigarette advertising. He released a report showing that the annual health care cost for smoking-related diseases is $52 billion. Tobacco is the only legal product that kills 400,000 of our citizens every year. In Texas, Sullivan says almost 17,000 people die each year from smoking. Health care costs related to Texas smokers exceed $3 billion. That's more than $200 for every person. Texas fares pretty well, though, when compared to other states. 42 other states have higher smoking death rates, and 30 other states have greater smoking-related health care costs. Secretary Sullivan is hoping states will pass laws for more health warnings on cigarette packages, to ban sales from cigarette machines, and to stop ads that depict smoking as glamorous. We've seen them in the Yeah. Magazines. What are the chances that something like this will pass, that they'll be more strict? Well, it'll strict. be up to the states, but they're mm -hmm. trying to pull funding from states and force them to pass uh, some of these advertising, these laws. Putting a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. Speaking of ads, tomorrow, um, options for drug treatment other than some of the hospitals that uh, advertise so heavily. We'll okay. have that tomorrow. Be looking right. forward to it. Thank you, Tim. By the way, the little girl who was the first person ever to receive a heart and liver transplant got yet another donor liver today. Stormy Jones arrived in Pittsburgh yesterday for the surgery, which was successfully completed at about noon. This was when Stormy got there yesterday. It was six years ago that she got the two organs in one historic operation. Well, she's 12 years old now, and her first donated liver had to be replaced today because hepatitis damaged it. Doctors say Stormy is pretty good tonight, doing fine, after surgery that lasted about 10 hours. So, she'll be fine. Yeah, we'll hear more about her tomorrow. Uh, Doug's Wednesday forecast is coming along next. And later on, some straight shooting talk from an anti-drugstore cowboy. To be honest with you, I like to be able to pronounce everything I read in the labels. I like to think of myself as having a healthy balanced diet. That means less salt, but less fat, all that sort of thing. Introducing Healthy Choice Frozen Dinners. Truly delicious meals, low in fat, sodium, and cholesterol, so they can help you keep your heart healthy. I would say it certainly, it certainly passes my, my strictest tests. Listen to your heart. Make a healthy choice. Tech, 
you can get glasses in one hour. And now, when you buy one pair of glasses with our coupon, you get a second pair free, both in one hour. A 10-year-old singing sensation, tomorrow on The Scene at Five. At the Olive Garden, at the end of every bowl of crisp salad, every basket of breadsticks, and every smile, you will always find another and another. The Olive Garden Italian restaurant, where all the best of Italy is yours. Come. Old Cutler Sierra, one of America's best-selling... Today, during the rodeo? Yes. Oh, yeah. but... Wouldn't you know it would turn out that way with all that sunshine we eventually yes, got? Yes, I say, you didn't really enjoy the first no, day. No, no, but I was close to it. I could put my arm out into it every once in a while, <laughs> and it felt wonderful. We won't get any of that tomorrow. A lot of rain coming our way tomorrow. The low temperature this morning in Houston officially was 45. Got up to 68 degrees this afternoon. 63 is the current temperature at Intercontinental Airport. 61 for downtown Houston. 62 right now at Hull Airport on the west side. 60 at Hobby. 59 right now for downtown Galveston. Beach water temperature is at 60, barometric pressure rising pretty high. Relative humidity 65%. Winds out of the southeast right now at 13 miles per hour. Several big weather makers on the map tonight. First, a giant high-pressure system over the eastern Great Lakes. That's pumping cold air off to the east of us, so we can pretty much say goodbye to that one. In fact, the cool front on the back side of it has already turned warm and is moving back up the Texas coast. A little low-pressure system right now in New Mexico spreading snow up into Colorado and across New Mexico is beginning to spawn a new little Pacific front coming down, and we've got some more high pressure developing out to the west that will push that on through probably sometime by late tomorrow. But with all these systems converging on us at one time, upper level low, a warm front, then the cold front, and the low pressure system at the surface, we're going to have a pretty rough day of it tomorrow. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. Up to the northwest, a lot of cloud cover and mostly light activity, although there's some pretty heavy snow, at least in a few spots. Small craft advisory continues in effect along the upper Texas coast. Winds tomorrow out of the south-southeast at about 20 knots. Wave heights offshore 6 to 8 feet, and the bay waters are going to be choppy to rough. Forecast for the evening period in Houston, increasing cloud cover. Sunset occurred at 614. Low temperature tonight, 52, 50% chance of rain already tonight. By in the morning, 70% chance of rain. Sunrise coming at 656. Winds out of the southeast at 11. So it's going to be kind of a windy day tomorrow in anticipation of the new cool front. Cloudy skies, 80% chance of rain tomorrow afternoon. High temperature, 60. Thursday, there'll be a little thinning of the overcast, but I'm going to leave in a 40% chance of rain. And until further investigation, I'm going to even leave 10% in for Friday, although by late Friday, at least, it ought to be a magnificent day with a low of 37 and a high of 59. And we could get something close to a freeze by Sunday morning. Again? Really? Yes, but it's just a light one. If it happens at all, it'll be a very light one, 32, 35 degrees. Okay, so put off the spring plant for a while, huh? I guess so, and all those little buds and things. Well, they know. Yeah, really. All the azaleas are out and everything. <laughs> They'll be surprised, all right. Uh -huh. There's another tennis superstar on the horizon. Yes, yeah, coming up next, a preview of a very popular tournament in Houston. Plus a live rodeo report from Cowboy Craig. It's next in sports. And that's not Craig. No. Understand Texas is to know that it's not just one place, but a lot of very different places with a lot of very different people. At first Gibraltar, we do understand that. Maybe that's why so many different Texans bank with us. First Gibraltar for years to come. Entertainment Tonight is next with an exclusive Robert Goulet fires back at his ex wife. Reason number 24 to see your Nissan dealer now. $1,200 cash back, direct from Nissan on the rugged standard hard body for In the history of Texas. Over 1,000 booths with new products and exciting ideas, many at special discounts. Don't miss the 7,500 square foot designer home. Exquisite landscaping. New home information center. Beautiful flower show. Seminars and demonstrations. Register to win hundreds of fantastic prizes. The Texas Home Show and the Texas Lawn and Garden Show. Two great shows for the price of one. February 23rd through 25th, George R. Brown Convention Center. See Wednesday's Houston Post or tune to KTRH News Radio 740 AM. 
This is some of Craig Roberts' favorite time of the year because he gets to relive the days of his youth. Yeah, but he's not exactly where I would expect it to no. find him out there at the rodeo. You're in the uh, dairy section? Yes, that's right. I'm taking it easy this year. I, I was going to go to one of the big cattle sales, but I found out it's not until tomorrow night. And Spencer Tillman, my cohort, uh, has bought all the cattle out here for yeah, his ranch uh -huh. in Missouri City after He's the got big the Super money, Bowl that's thing. For sure. yeah. So I'm in the uh, in the dairy area, and they tell me that a lot of the records have already been broken after just two or three days of the judging. In fact, out here, uh, records are falling all over the place, especially over in the dome for the rodeo. If you recall, a couple of nights ago, Ty Murray rode an 85 in bull riding, and I said, "That's it, the first go around's history." And then last night's two sellers, watch this guy. He's got a uh, softball catcher's mask on, and he busts an 86 to go one better than Ty Murray. So here's your first go-around leader in bull riding. And I don't ever remember when we've had scores of 85 and 86 just three days into this rodeo. Now watch Stu when he gets off, and he's going to give it a high five, throw that mask up in the air. He had a great, great day. So stay tuned on Nightcast. We'll see what's going on. The bareback and the saddle bronc riders are also breaking records out here. We had 375s in bareback riding last night. Of course, the Rockets are also going to try to stay in the saddle tonight. They're in Minneapolis after the loss in Chicago. The last time they were up to play the Timberwolves, they were beaten. That's their only trip into Minneapolis. Uh, this is only their second one. They got GM insists it has learned the lesson. It apparently wants to learn more. Here's a Miata parked at GM's design studios. The Miata is evidence that the battle for consumers is no longer won simply by building quality cars. Now consumers want their choice of look and safety and high-tech features. Even if Ford, GM, and Chrysler make their assembly lines flexible enough to respond to quickly changing consumer tastes, challenges car makers can't control remain. Stiffer and potentially costly fuel efficiency and emission standards, for instance. Then there is the spiraling cost of health care. What the government will do to control it affects the car makers. GM alone ensures 2.3 million workers and dependents. Grant Perry, CNN Business News, Detroit. Weak earnings and sales at the big three have depressed stock prices. All three companies have underperformed the Dow Jones Industrial since the beginning of 1989. Just in 24 hours and take away your old bedding free. And who else lets you sleep on a new mattress now with no payments or interest for months? So who has the best mattress deal in town? There's an enemy in your car's engine. Friction. Without the right motor oil, friction can damage your engine and send it to an early grave. You need the special quality of Pennzoil motor oil. Pennzoil exceeds the API's highest standards for maximum protection against friction. Conquer the enemy friction with the world-class protection of Pennzoil. Remember, today we do have our fingerspelling test. The Eckerd I work at is just a mall from the Texas School for the Deaf. Eckerd pharmacist, Hilda Moctezuma. So many of my customers are hearing impaired. That's why I'm taking sign language classes. I'm not an expert yet. How can I help you? But when one of them comes in and sees that there's someone they can talk to... Is a temperature? Fine, have medicine. Well, it makes me feel pretty good. Stealing from Peter to pay Paul is not the, it's not the, the way to, to get around the problem. Is taking from the rich to give to the poor the correct way to equalize education in Texas? Tonight at 10, Linda Laurel searches for the answer. It is an issue that could decide the next governor's race in Texas. That and more tonight at 10. It is painfully obvious that riding bulls and horses is no easy way to earn a living. Following in your father's footsteps is a tough ride, too. Larry Otis has the story of a young man who has managed to do both. Rocker B is the brand, but it's as much a store as a ranch. Father and son selling cowboy gear of every sort. Ropes, spurs, boots. It's all for sale, but Dad has been known to fudge a little for son. You get him free shirts or what? So we're not quick. Yeah, he gets free shirts. <laughs> You'll have to forgive Ben Stevenson. I'm pretty proud of him. Son, Ben the Third, shares his name and his dream. Houston Cowboy, come on! Ben Stevenson the Third rides barebacks, but competes like his father never did. 
on a pro level. I enjoy seeing pro rodeo, and I enjoy seeing him do it. Years ago, a young son saw father and others do it. And I said, Shh, I got to do it, you know. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to be, a bull rider. Yes, 27-year-old Ben prefers bulls to barebacks. Says they're softer. It's just a rush. You know, it's just it's a great feeling. Better yet is being a role model himself. I'm straight. I don't take drugs. Uh, I'm pretty clean cut, you know, I think. And kids just, they look up to, I think, people like that. They all How look up to Legs legs Stevenson. Because he wears a 30, 40 Wrangler. One of the tallest cowboys with a good idea where he's going. Let's I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to be there for eight seconds. <laughs> ben the third rides tonight. Don't count him out. Larry Otis, Channel 2 News. And he's looking for a good ride because he hopes to qualify for the national finals. By the way, his father still competes on what they call the old-timer mm. circuit. Doesn't look like an old-timer to me, though. No, does he doesn't. It? Not at all. Best to father and son. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you tonight at 10. Have a good evening.